Okay, this sermon is entitled, Works as Evidence of Salvation Means You're Still Not Saved. <clears throat> I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 87 reads, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God, Selah. Now turn over to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, we're going to take a look at a few verses here. Now the reason why I'm preaching this sermon is because there are so many people out there that are a bunch of frauds, and a bunch of liars, and a bunch of false prophets, and they're saying things like, it's not our works that save us, but it's the works that we do that gives us evidence that we're saved. And all this is doing is backloading works into the gospel. Front-loading would be just saying that you have to have works. Backloading is, is saying that, well, the works don't save, but you still have to have them for evidence. Now, it's the same thing. Both people are lost. Both people are unsaved. Because in the end, they're trusting in their works to some degree, and they're not trusting in Jesus Christ alone, and I don't care how many times they say they are. A lot of these people will say they are trusting in God's grace, and it's all by grace. But you have to have the works as the evidence. Well, a but simply means you don't really believe it. You don't really mean what you just said or just asserted. And then whatever follows the but is what you really believe. When people say, well, it's not by works, it's by grace, but you'll have to have the works, what they're saying is that it's not by works, but it is by works. They're, what they're really saying is that it's by works. And if they believe it's by works, they've negated and they have not believed in the finished work of the cross. John 17 and verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now let me ask you something. If the finished work of the cross took place before a person was even born, how can their future works have anything to do with what Jesus did? How can it contribute to what he did? It can't. The fact that these people, these unsaved lordship Calvinists and Arminians and whoever they are, the fact that they, they think that you have to have works as the evidence means that they have not trusted in the finished work and that it's their evidence, it's their works that they're really trusting in. And if you have to have the works as the evidence, you have to have the works, period, or because you can't have salvation without evidence, based on logic. So these people are just as lost as everyone else. The people that say it's by works or it's by faith plus works, they're lost. The people who say, well, it's not by works, but you, but you will have the works. You have to have the works. It's evidence. They're lost too. Salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. It was not by works before you got saved. It's not by works when you get saved or after you're saved. There does not have to be any works before, during, or after. Salvation is, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You have to be doing no works, not to be saved, or not to give evidence of your salvation. You can't be trusting in any of that. You have to trust in Jesus Christ and him alone, because he's the only one that finished the work which thou gavest him to do. Turn over to John chapter 19. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. See, the scripture is very clear that it, he does all the work. Every bit of it. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 1. And see, these unsaved people, they just won't accept this. They have to somehow add their works in there. They have to add their two cents. And it's because of pride. It's because they just don't trust Jesus Christ. So they have to have something else to go by. And it's kind of like it just gives them false assurance. But the Bible is very clear. In, in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, whenever it talks about him sitting down on the majesty of high, it denotes completion, finality, that he completed in, you know something. He purged by himself our sins. He doesn't need our help. And... We can't contribute to what he did. Because number one, we weren't there when he accomplished our salvation. Number two, our works are as filthy rags. Our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Number three, believing in or trusting in our works is, is not trusting in, in Jesus Christ's finished work. So we have to trust that he paid it all 
It's 100% by grace. It's 100% by his death, burial, and resurrection. It's 0% our works. Okay? Jesus said, he that believes on me has everlasting life. He never mentions anything about works. You don't have to add anything to that. Just believe on him and you're saved. It's that, it's that simple. By faith alone, in Christ alone. There are no buts. There are no ifs. And there are no ands. And there's nothing that can be added to what Jesus did. And if you believe there is, you're not yet saved. Salvation is to those who, be, who believe on him alone and who work not. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.